Good morning. This is Dr. Bill Wyeth, and I'm with the American Orthodontic Society, and I'm going to talk to you, talk to you a few minutes here about some helps in doing orthodontics. Now, some of these you may not care to use at all, and others may be very useful. So I'm going to pass them out and. Uh, and you decide what you want if you look at them. There's several interesting things that have helped me over the years and so I'm going to just pass them on to you and hope you get some use out of them. Uh, let's go ahead here and uh, put up the first one uh, would be uh, brackets that we use and I personally like single brackets, you know, something that takes up a very small space on the tooth and gives you a greater inner bracket space. So this space in between here is greater than if you had twin brackets or some other type of bracket that was bigger than that. Anyway, I really like single brackets. Now we've gotten to where we use just a single bracket with a vertical slot and it's harder to rotate with, but we know how to rotate with them with wedges and different things. But these brackets, you can bend these wings up. I'll show you some uh, pictures of them close up here I mean where we're looking at them from a different angle now you you see how the the tip is built into this bracket that shows a real nice illustration of that the root structure and I think this is a cuspid here uh, should be distal to the crown on the cuspids and all of the teeth have a certain amount but not as much maybe as the cuspid right here but that shows the tipping effect that the bracket has on the tooth in other words if you stick this bracket on the tooth correctly and then you put a straight piece of wire here it's going to pick this one up a little bit uh, through here then it's going to line this cuspid up in that fashion right there. If you've got a wire in here that fills the slot of the bracket. Now I like to use an 018 bracket slot. In other words it's 18 thousandths bracket slot. Now a lot of guys have gotten hooked on uh, 022 or 22,000. So that's 4,000 bigger than the 18 bracket. You can do anything you want to with an 018 bracket. And we use some large wires to do a set, two or three areas that we need them, but you don't need them very often. And so you can bend this smaller wire, you can flex it more in between this brand space than you can the bigger wire. So you can torque quicker and do a lot of things quicker with the 018 wire, in my way of thinking, uh, than you can with the 022. But many of you are in 022, and I'm not trying to get you to change, but uh, personally uh, I feel like you can do a better job with the 018 bracket. That's my my opinion though, so <laughs> a lot of you guys uh, have been doing this a long time, but if, if you haven't and you're starting out, man, I would start out with a 018 or 18,000 slot bracket. And about the biggest wire we use is what they call 1725, 
or it's 17 thousandths in the vertical and 2 5 in the horizontal. In other words, uh, the wires 2 5 like that and, and, and the 17, 17 in this dimension and 25 thousandths in that dimension right there. So we'll erase all of that and go to the next one. I don't want to keep you here all day talking about stuff. A lot of you folks are busy and you don't like to look at these things very long and uh, just get some idea. Now on the lower anteriors they work fine you see I've got a little lower down you see on that so it puts the cusp it up higher than that. that's a little excess I like them just about something like that and you can learn how to put them on uh, easy enough now these wings you can stick something under them and turn them out let me get to a picture here that will show us just looking straight down on the brackets uh, that's just again on the cuspids but th these brackets are nice and I do want to say one thing I was using them all the time and uh, you do get food underneath these wings and uh, we didn't have any good sealants and so over a period of time you get some decalcification under the wings but they've got such good sealants now you go in and put the sealant on and then you bond the bracket over the sealant and the toothbrush doesn't hit it very good it's hard to get a toothbrush you know in here when you've got a wire across here well you have to kind of do something to push down in underneath there with those brushes to clean them uh, but once you've got a good sealant in there then these wings don't give you any trouble like that and if you're just starting off this is a much better bracket you can stick a wedge like instrument in here just come down come in from this side and turn it a little bit you can turn this up and then that'll make the tooth go in this direction see you can rotate excellent with this type of bracket so they have some good features and rotation is the main thing it's like you just had an arch wire that long in there but actually you you can put these bends in the wire and torque and chip and all this stuff you can work over a longer distance or inner bracket distance with this just like we work with have these uh, brackets without any wings and we have a vertical slot down them so the ladies that worked in the office preferred that type of bracket and here they are you see you can stick a wedge type instrument in here and just bend it up a little and this is very soft metal and it will push down on this push up on this and it'll bend this wing up like that now when the wire goes through the bracket you see it will hit here and tend to turn this tooth in this direction you see and then you can go up and down with your wire to regulate however you want this normally the height we do that with a real flexible wire and you can do the rotation with the flexible wire you normally use about an 016 uh, NITI wire to do most of this stuff when you start off but these brackets work great for rotation and if I were advising you I would uh, say start off with something like this now they come out with all these fancy fancy brackets and they claim they can do all this wonderful stuff if you're a good operator and you know how to do it you can do any cutting picking thing that you want to do 
with just grabbing a hold of the tooth, you see. And now you need to slide, and they slide in here, all right. There's no problem with that. So don't buy in unless you really know what you're doing. If you really want one of those special brackets, well, okay. But you can do it with some pretty simple brackets. All right, that's the way to rotate. We go back. They're sitting on the teeth. You see, they've got a certain angle to them, and the bracket if put on the tooth properly will angle the tooth that way. And now, this is another thing. <coughs> if you really serious about doing this I would get this is an upper bracket now this is your main bracket I mean tube for your main arch wire coming through here like you might have your your old megas and stuff kind of going up in this fashion coming across here to tie this back this is a convertible top you've got over this. Now if you have something down on your second motor back here and it makes a, you have to have a bend in the wire between the first motor and the second motor, you have to pull this thing off. Well you stick a little gadget in there like a can opener and it'll just pop this thing off and then this is a bracket instead of a tube. Now this is our auxiliary tube that we put lip bumpers and intruding arches and in anything that we need to do like to have a double arch deal and with this double arch you can start a case off with just a, a slight uh, very flexible wire which will line all the teeth up and rotate and do all this good stuff but it has very little effect on elevating a closed bite but you can put a a uh, you can put a intruding arch in this thing and man it'll go to town so uh, like you come off you'd have to uh, take the arch you come out like this and have this loop that comes around this way and then you activate this except that's not the way to build the thing. Let me go back over here. You go up. And now you go out this way. So you activate it. Now when you pull it down to tie it in, it tightens this spring up here. And it really puts a lot of pressure out here in front of the teeth to lift them. So you can put this on the day you start the case and you can speed up the, your treatment tremendously, usually a couple of months or so, by intruding and leveling your arch to start with as you go. And this is where this goes if you have a headgear or a big tube or want to put a big daddy arch wire in there, you can go in this tube right here. That's the upper. And we put our molars bands about three quarters millimeter higher down on the lower especially. And then you just match that so that you got the bicuspids and things slightly higher also. That's the way I line mine up. And this is the lower right here. And we've got the, uh, this is the six-year molar, and the second molar is always just a single slot. Now, I've got bands on them, and I still band the six-year molar. You can put a, a bracket on this tooth. It doesn't have to do all that much. Uh, now, you raise it higher. This is convertible, and it shows that this is a, a, just a, three-quarters of a millimeter lower than the 
Uh, in other words, you put your bracket down on the band. The band fits at a certain point, and you lower the bracket on the band, and the supplier will do that for you if you want to. Now I've got another little <laughs> gadget here. Um, we sometimes you want to do brackets on teeth and make a little uh, suction thing. It goes on there, and you can take them off. You can use silicone, and you can use a candy bar that's kind of sticky. And we take just a little bit of that uh, sticky candy and put it on the back of the bracket right here. See. And then you can put that on the tooth and get the candy out of the way that's sticking out. And you can keep the tooth, the bracket on the tooth. And this is a barred park. I just cut a piece of this sticky candy, caramel candy off and put it on the tooth like that. Uh, there's a couple of brackets just showing twin brackets with that. We stick that on the bracket. Now you take your bracket and go over on the model uh, and stick this thing on the model and trim it off and everything. Get all this glue off. And now you're going to get all your brackets. That model doesn't look too odd, does it? And uh, put the brackets on there. Now I'm using twin brackets there, but I don't use them in the mouth. Uh, Alright, we stick the brackets on there and then we put a lot of separating media medium on there that covers the bracket but doesn't cover it so much that this silicone won't hold on to it, you see. We paint all this stuff on it over all the teeth you're going to touch wherever you're going to touch with the silicone. You cover it with this uh, separating medium. Now, so here are just six teeth. We'll show sticking this thing on. And there it is, cleaned off and everything. The separating meter is kind of dried, but it's got a coat on all these teeth so that this silicone doesn't stick to the tooth or the bracket, but it holds on to it. Now you can take uh, this, I uh, just push some silicone on that tooth. The silicone just touches the area that you've got the separating media on. There's no problem with that. Now you let that harden on your model and you come back and put it in water later on and the candy dissolves and you can just slip this thing off. I think I've got a picture here. Of it. Well, there it is drying or hardening. And when it gets hardened, you can just have both upper and lower done. And you can just put them in some water or squirt water on them. And they'll pop this off. And this will have the bracket. And you wash the bracket off real good and blow it off dry it and everything when you go into the mouth now you come in when you get ready to seat this in the mouth okay here's somebody that we made the model on see now we've got brackets and on this silicone that we can put over these but we were gonna clean them off real good and put sealant on the teeth, get everything ready. Now you take the uh, the brackets that you've got in this little mold and put the composite that you're going to bond them on there with. And if you've got a light cured composite, you can get through this silicone with it, or you can put a composite on there that sets up because you can go to the mouth real quick with this thing and uh, your mouth's all ready to go. Somebody can make these up in the lab and just have them out there and you can come, then your ladies can get the teeth ready 
and you can come by and see all those brackets on there just a jiffy now let's just show that again we're going to this is an extraction case okay there's the model and so we see that on the teeth with the bonding material inside on the brackets and you can light cure it through that if you want to it'll shine right through this stuff and uh, cure that and you can come in from the back side to to cure it real good or if you have a, a material that just sets up itself and leave it in a while and you'll slip them off and your brackets are stuck on the teeth and then you can go in and put your uh, flexible arch wire in. Uh, I should have used the single brackets here on this. This is you don't have a great deal of bracket inner bracket space here uh, on these this type of bracket, and you see them more. But anyway, that's is what we we used on this particular case. Now. You can also come in with these intruding wires, like if you want to lower these teeth right here, you can put this thing on here, and the intruding wire will be way down here, see, even lower. You bring it up and hook it to these teeth up here, and it'll have these teeth lowered down and open the bite by the time you get these others straightened out, see. So you do it real quick, whereas if you're waiting for a single wire to come in here and do this, you got to wait till you line them up and get where you can hold a heavy enough wire that will intrude them. So the double wire in the intruding wire is something that speeds up your treatment. And I'm not pulling your leg. It really does. It makes things go faster and people want that so you can put that on day one uh, when you first put this stuff in okay now that's just we just bond those things on like that now that's I prefer just to put the brackets on the teeth myself now if I'm going to do something special to a bicus but I don't know why we put a band on this bicus bit I just stick a bracket on it and go ahead with it too. Uh, but we apparently had some bands and I always eventually we're going to band or put a bracket on the second molar back here on the bottom. On the top they'll follow you around a lot of times and we don't need to bracket the upper second molars as often but on the bottom almost always we'll end up bracketing them so that they're in line with everything else in here and remember the the brackets are lower on the band so that the upper cusp that comes down in here and come out here don't hit them much or hardly ever will hit them but if they're chewing on the cusper high, they chew on on your bracket. That screws up your your ability to do the job. See. All right, here we are. Just line it up with a heavier wire, rectangular wire, and we've got it open and everything through there. So that's just some of the plain mechanics that we. We soldered uh, class two hooks a lot of time. We used to solder them virtually all the time. We just have these. You learn how to solder that brass wire to the regular wire. We put the class two hooks, and this drops it down and makes your class two. Uh, you your class two is always a. Well, let me show that a little different here. I'm gonna make this a white sheet here class two you always have a kind of a 
rectangle and you're pulling from here down to here so you got this much vertical force on it that's picking these teeth up and pulling these teeth down so if you put the hook lower it makes this rectangle shorter so if your hook is dropped down and now you're pulling from there to there you have less vertical component and less opening of the bite when you're using class 2 elastics this is a nice little thing to learn so put your hooks lower that helps a lot okay let's run on here and get through with this thing that's just the uh, bonding that wire makes it make this triangle much smaller in here something like that or if we were pulling up here you'd have whoa something happened here let's see where my deal is well let me see There we go. But I'm I'm able to have no. Nope. Thought everything was going smooth, but it isn't. Let me pause for a minute. Okay, I think we've got it working again. I just thought we did. Okay, maybe we're going again. So let's run through this real quick. Got that little flow in there maybe I can edit that out uh, things were lined up pretty good and we put a rectangular wire in there and we use our class 2 uh, deals there and we go in and close the space however we want to keep everything in the class 1 relationship and finish the case on out it's no big deal now I want to show you how to make a nice hook that you can stick to a tooth uh, it's just a piece of looks like Australian wire the way it's heat treated and you just take a tooth you know and you can stick that thing right on the tooth these two wings we have you'll cut this one off somewhere up here and you can bend them in and bend this out you know and the wings would would stick on the tooth here and here you just kind of put a bunch of composite up here and push that into it and you'll have this hook in there that'll come out and you or you want it to hook down this way and you hook an elastic in it uh, to do whatever you want to with a tooth like that upper lower tooth it looks uh, funny bend that like that and just cut, cut it off and now you've got it in a, a pair of pliers now you can buy mesh people don't mess with this anymore much but I used to do orthodontics as economically as I could and I buy that mesh and you just spot weld it uh, to the tooth to the mesh now you just put some composite on the back of the mesh, push it on the tooth, and you got it stuck on there. But you don't need all that. You can just put the composite on the tooth and just stick this thing in it, and it'll be on it. And you can pull the deal down like that. If you if you got a tooth up here and you're wanting to elevate it up, let me show you. We use that on another one. You can figure out 
wherever you want the hook and you make hooks and stick them on that way that's all I'm saying and you can put mesh on them if you want to but it's not uh, necessary to bond the two so I stuck this one on a second motor up there that we're going to have to pull way down you know and so I put this deal up there and hook elastic to that let's see made her own hooks and everything so now you put the elastic to it and pull it down like you would like it uh, so that's just using these hooks now the, another thing twisting spring onto teeth if you take a long piece of spring like this and open up the end a little bit you take this part you put your fingers on it here and leave it on the spoon and just get right up now this is open coil spring and we're going to turn it around in this direction so that the arch wire you just come up here and touch that on the arch wire and then turn this spring over and it will go around the arch wire then you go around it'll be like this and the spring will be off out here and you're turning it and it'll just feed the spring onto the wire so you don't have to take your arches your arch wires out to put a spring on them that's what I'm getting at and you can turn it and you keep it on the spoon so you cut off just what you need and uh, I'll show you I'm gonna try to uh, take pictures of this so you can see now here's you're holding the spring in your fingers it's still on the spoon you come up here and you make your first turn under that wire and then you keep doing that and it'll slip right past this bracket or you can loosen your wire up you know where you can get it on and you keep turning this around and around and this spool of stuff will just spin back here in the back and you can put spring on your arch wire you see a place you just need to expand a little bit you can put spring just feed the spring into it like that now you've got it this way you can just twist it and this thing will go on there and it'll just go on up to where you stop it then you cut it off and then you compress it into that gap right here and it'll expand this area like mad so learn how to do that if you haven't learned that already that saves you a lot of time you just spin a little spring in there and you've got something pushing the teeth apart it's all cool the spring is going to tend to rotate them in this direction so you need to have them tied but they got to be kind of loose or they won't slide apart like that if you tie the wire down too tight it won't slide through there just it's common sense just really use a little common sense in doing orthodontics so now we get what spring we want we cut it off now we got a piece of spring in here this much we're going to stop it say here and push this over to here and it's going to crowd all that spring in this one gap and if you don't think it'll open it up <laughs> uh, it will do it you see now we've shoved it down and that's where we want to do the opening or the spreading of that this is a type of donna course or if you had two teeth here and one back behind you can open up the space for those teeth to, to come through just tie the spring on there. You don't even have to take the arch wire out to do it, see. Just loosen it up here in the front, raise it up and twist that spring on there. And then when you get over where you want it, you take this part, push it up, shove it in here, and tie the thing down. And you've got pressure moving these teeth apart. So that's a nice little help in there. So anyway, there's that flexible wire on here we always put uh, like if we want to expand the arch we'll have this loop real big and we'll squeeze it down so that the wire itself 
is pushing out from this loop. It's trying to push these this way and the motors in this direction, you see. And that little wire just done like that will will just make it a little loop like this and then if you compress it down to where it's kind of like that or even here then it's got some pressure that's expanding the whole large in here oh god all right uh, use of electro surge i'm not gonna show that in here but i am gonna show fixing a cavitron I learned I took used to take these old Cavitron hands that were worn out. The point was worn out. And you, uh, they were no good. You ended up throwing it away. Now this is a, a solder, electric soldering uh, device here. It's got some leads on it. See that? This is a carbide lead here. You got it plugged in, and it'll have uh, current on it. And you can do you can learn how to electric solder. If you don't know how to do this, you need to learn how to electric solder things. All right, I took the old Cavitron tip that used used to go way on out here somewhere. Well, we worn it down to something that just wasn't good, so we cut it off right here. And then I took it and cut a groove in the Cavitron tip. Now these are little brass wires with solder on the end of them and we'll take, cut that groove in there and then you can tie that on with a little wire if you want to or get it where it stays in there snug. Uh, and now we're going to take this solder, we, we put that solder on one end of that electrode sticking out here, we bring it up here and touch it to this thing right here and we can take the other deal but if you touch it it contacts and this sort of melt and just flow over this and now you've got this arch wire it's hard wire in the cavitron tip so this is something that was very helpful to me now i got it like that and i'll come in and take this uh, lead right here touch it and this touches from the other so the electricity flows through it like like this and gets this hot but doesn't anneal it and then this solder will melt and cover over that you put flux on it too to okay now there's the cavitron tip that's the old timey one and we solder it on like that. Now you've got that wire soldered on that tip. Now you can take this wire and you get something plugged in your, uh, excuse me, let me go back and jump the forward. You can take this wire, uh, get back in there. And I can make that wire go down in those tips. Uh, something else screwed up on here. But anyway, you see what we can do with that. Let me kind of back this up again. I can take this wire and... Let's see. It came off of my pointer that's what what was wrong with it now you can run this wire down in a slot of a, a bracket slot and knock stuff out of there you can turn it and go back in say that one of these holes get something plugged in it you can take that wire and go in there and it'll just hammer the heck out of it. If you want to, on the end of that wire, you can take it like your wire is round like this. You know, you can 
grind it down to where the wire goes out and it makes a chisel point if you look at it from the top it would be kind of like that you see it'd be like a chisel and then you run that in that hole and hit it one way and then the other way and it'll just cut whatever it is in the hole and get it out you know so this has been a very helpful thing to me over the years and so I'll just pass that idea along to you. Uh, I think this is about the end of Now I've taken that thing and uh, if you want to know if there's a real hole here you stick that in there and it'll find out in a hurry. Now you don't want to get in something you need to take a burn and clean the thing out or you probably have to deaden that too to put a fill in but if you wonder if it's a hole you stick that on it and you can find out real quick if it's a hole it'll go through it'll knock the junk out of the way and it'll go down in it so uh, that's another use for that okay that finishes up that and I took a lot longer than I hope to but I hope there's some things in there that you will be able to use and people can see these things and see what you have to do to actually straighten somebody's teeth and uh, I tell you this is neat to be able to show somebody and this goes all over the world I was amazed uh, at this so I'll say goodbye and hope you get to use that and I'm going to stop this thing.